Hi, this is Summer with Summer's Tips and Stitches, and this is the, I think like the 10 favorite things I've made, or my 10 favorite things. I was tagged in it by Katrina. Um, is she from Grady of Grandma? Maybe I should have looked that up better. But anyway, in the description box below will be a link of people that are doing this video. Um... I actually was asked to do this a couple weeks ago and I think I've kind of procrastinated about it because I was trying to find things that I actually had still here because you know I'm probably not gonna pop in a picture of something so let's get started with oh and I do have so everything I it's everything that I've crocheted except there is one thing that I've knitted so I'll start with that I'll pause it put it on we need and show you Okay, so this is the first thing. This is a knitted item. It's made with, um, I think from Bad Girl Wolf Studio Galaxy Yarn. Um, the pattern is called New Path Shawl by um, the gal that has the One Dog Wolf blog. Now, I changed the pattern, so essentially it's up to the first row of lace and then I just kept going because I had so much more yarn so um it's kind of her pattern but to be honest her pattern is very similar to another shawl the easy goes it shawl that I did which is about a bunch of garter stitch lace garter stitch so this is one of the items I just love it because it's kind of a you can't really see it there there you go you can see it's a sparkly yarn and I these are my favorite colors to crochet with pink purple and teal or bluish teals blues my absolute favorite okay so that's one okay here's my second item this is the fruitridge shawl from knit, knit crate i made this with the knit crate yarn which is a super wash merino wool with the sparkle in it <laughs> as you can see it's pink and has sparkle i really liked this um i changed this pattern too I did not do the fringe they wanted fringe and I feel like and this is personally I feel like fringe is a waste of good yarn ha <laughs> um, so yeah and so instead of doing the fringe I took one skein of the yarn and did the whole pattern up until that ran out and then I put on the second skein of yarn and started the decrease so that's my second item I'll get the third okay my third item is the Adirondack wrap this is from One Dog Wolf. I don't know her real name. It's like Chai Wee or something. Um, but her, her blog is One Dog Wolf. Um, originally, I saw this pattern in a picture, and I really liked it. But then when I went to go read the pattern, it was very difficult to understand. But then a friend said she wanted it, so I thought, okay, you can figure this out. So I sat down for quite a while, and I rewrote the pattern in my own way minus her her abbreviations and her shortcuts and i'm so happy i did because i really love it essentially it's three triangle shawls joined together to create this nice really big wrap and the thing is is when you live in wisconsin and you have forgotten something in the car or whatnot it's real nice to quick wrap up in this and zip out to the car um, it's obviously, I, I would not wear this with a regular clothes as a wrap, maybe cut, cuddle up outside with a campfire. But anyway, I've made a ton of these. Um, I made one for that neighbor. I made one for her friend. I made one for Maddie. I made one for me. I made one for my sister. And I want to say my mother-in-law too. So this is my third item, the Adirondack wrap. Okay, next item. Okay, my next item is not wearable. It is this painting slash crochet project I did. Um, I'll hold it up really close so you can see. I saw something similar to this on Facebook. I crocheted all kinds of different flowers and then I sewed buttons on them. And then I used the E6000 and I glued them onto a regular painting canvas. And then I drew their stems and all kinds of marker paint and the different color greens 
long stems, short stems, different color greens. And then I took some paint in similar colors and dabbled it behind. Um, so this is what the painting looks like or the art is multi-medium art. Um, I made this with the leftover yarn that I used for my virus, king size virus blanket. Um, this is Karen Simply Soft. And those are the colors that I used. Look at that flower. Isn't that beautiful? I'll tell you what, that one was a real difficult flower to make because you had to get something like, I want to say 18 loops on your hook. And I was using that small 14 or four millimeter clover and more. So I had this little space to get all of those on. So I love this flower. I love this flower. But yeah, this one has a bead on the middle. This one has a button. This has just the loop. So yeah, I really love that. I hang this on the wall above my bed um, when I have the virus blanket on. So that is my fourth item. Now for a fifth. Okay, so this is well loved. This is the Delaney hat. I made this, um, I want to say maybe two years ago with a Karen cake. I want to say, I don't know what color it is. Rainbow, <laughs> rainbow sprinkles. I don't know. But I mean, the hat is very simple and it's not necessarily that I love the hat, but um, this is one of my, oh my gosh, I'm almost even embarrassed to think about this. So I, it had to have been two years ago. And I took a picture of this hat and I posted it on Mikey, the crochet crowds, Facebook group. And then Mikey took my picture and shared it and said, summer made this cute curly Q hat with the Karen cakes. Isn't it great or something? And I flipped out. I was like, I mean, I was flipping out. I was losing it. I was so excited. I couldn't believe it that Mikey from the crochet crowd took my photo, shared it and said, summer made this cute curly cute hat. Oh my God. I lost it. So where's the hat now is pretty much regularly worn by Flynn, even though I kind of think it's a girl hat. He loves it. And it's, you know, it's definitely worn. It's been washed and dried, but yeah, I made this hat. He folds it all the way up. I mean, it's, Oh, it's a floppy hat, but it's held up pretty well. He's worn it for two winters. So yeah, this is number, this is my fifth item. And I think I just love it so much because Mikey from the crochet crowd shouted me out. Of course, I didn't have a YouTube channel then. Oh, well. Okay, number six. Number six is a hat I made myself. This is a pattern from Bag o Day. Um, this is an alpaca wool acrylic blend and this is a little pom-pom that I got from Amazon and the really cool thing about these pom-poms is um, they're snaps they come with a snap on it and then they come with this other piece that you can sew so that way you can take it off for washing and I'll tell you what I wore this hat all winter and everybody complimented me on this hat um, I don't remember what it's called in fact, she has a picture of it for her thumbnail when she teaches you how to make it, where it's in like candy colors, like pink and teal and real, real bright. And it's on that weird mannequin head she has. You know what I mean? Um, but this, this came out so nice with the colors, almost perfectly striping. Um, and like I said, every time I wear it, people are like, oh my God, I love your hat. Where'd you get it? So that is number six, maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I just keep chucking stuff on the floor. Here, I'll get another. Okay, so this next one has suffered a little damage, but this is my own. This pig, you see my son, somehow broke one of the safety eyes out. But um, I made this because I bought all that pink yarn and I wanted to make a pig with some of the extra because I felt like it's actually a little too pink for um, for flesh for a white girl. And I was looking at patterns to buy for a pig and my husband's like, you can do it yourself. You don't need a pattern. And sometimes I feel like, what? What are you saying? Of course I need a pattern. But here we go. I made this pig. Now, of course she's crooked, if you all remember. 
Uh, she kind of leans off to the side. I sewed her legs on crooked, but it just makes her a thinking pig. Um, it's just basically a ball. I started making the circle, increasing, and then I got to the size of the pig that I wanted. And then when I, then I started decreasing, I closed it up, stuffed it, poked its eyes in, and then I made a snout, which again was a circle. It grew to the size I wanted, and then I did it in the back loops only to create you know, this down part. The legs are just simple little tubes. And the ears, I made a triangle. So yeah, and then obviously a little curly cue for the tail. It was actually pretty simple. I never wrote anything up for it because that's really a hard thing to do. I might still do that, and then it'll be like my first pattern. But here we go, here's the pig. <sighs> um, the eighth thing I'm gonna show you is kind of, it's not completely my favorite thing, but I'm really impressed with myself. Um, it's this new crochet bag I made. The pattern came out of a book that I got at Hobby Lobby. And it was supposed to be a bag like this with big straps that came out and a little flower here. But I just put this kind of a handle on it. And the reason I'm so impressed is not only did I put a lining, so a lining in, but I put in a zipper. My first ever zipper. And this is actually a really cool pattern um, of stitch. Um, one row is single crochet, chain, skip one, single crochet, chain, skip one, all the way across. And then the next row on top of it, you single crochet on your single crochets. Then instead of skipping, you do a double crochet on that skipped chain. You know that, yeah, that chain space. And so that's how you go around. It's a two row repeat. So yeah, I'm really impressed with myself because I sewed in a zipper in this project bag. And right now I just have um, lobster claws and cinch beads in here um, because I was gonna make some more stitch markers. And um, what number am I on? Was that eight? The night thing is kind of like an idea. It's not specifically this cow, although I do like this cow. I made this cow for Debbie and Karen's crochet along. They're low cow. But I also, this kind of represents, because I don't have any of them really left, uh, when I started making the crochet dolls. Um, the pattern maker for those is Friendly Red Fox. If you want to get into making Amigurumi dolls, she has very well written patterns. And the thing I like the most about hers is there's very little that you have to sew on. So usually, now this one of course is an exception, because the legs and arms but usually she starts you crocheting one leg you take that leg you set it aside you don't finish it off then you make another leg then you join after you've made the same leg you you chain three and you join it to that other leg and then you go around and that's how you start making the body then it has you decrease for the neck increase for the head didn't decrease for the top of the head so then all you really have to sew on those dolls is their arms. So I really love those dolls. Of course you change colors, once for the shoe, then change for the pants, and then she has some that you can make like little shirts and then make a little strap for the tank tops and curly cues for the hair. But anyway, I love the Friendly Red Fox. Now this one, we did have to do a lot of sewing for this. The arms and legs all had to get sewed on. There's the face, the nose, the ears, these little balls. <laughs> I still am not 100% sure what those are. And then of course I gave this cow some udders and then a tail. So I would say these Amigurumi dolls I've been making. I made one, um, she has this cute little line called Friendly Berry and it's like that's also a friendly berry, a friendly bunny, a friendly fox, and a friendly raccoon I think. Um, so I really have loved making these they're cute. They're, they, it blows my mind <laughs> that I can make them and they look so cute. Now, I've yet to been able to actually sell them. I made a bunch and brought them to that craft show that I did in November. And nobody actually bought any. But I gave them all to my nieces and nephews for Christmas. Okay. I think I'm going for item number nine. Okay, so this looks a little rough because obviously I'm a, I'm a bigger gal and Juanita is very slim. <laughs> But this is my crocheted granny shrug. Um, I saw Rose 
from Rose Likes Crochet. I think she wore this in her very first video. It was purple. And I was like, oh my gosh, it looks so awesome. And she said she got it from a tutorial from Mikey. So I made one for myself. This is using, is it Barcelona? I don't remember exactly the colorway, but I bought five skeins of yarn. And I think I used four and a half for this. I was able to make a pair of mittens and a hat with the rest of it. So yeah, um, it's just, that's about all there is to it. It's really long. Um, and yeah, that is one of my favorite things. It's really my favorite because it's the first real wearable thing that I made. I've made shawls and hats and gloves and baby blankets and a poncho. And this is similar to a poncho, but it kind of has sleeves. And I wore it to work and everyone's like, oh my God, did you make that? It's so awesome. Um, since then, obviously, I made the purple sweater that... Um, Debbie, the Canadian crotcheter, she made one in yellow, and I made that pattern, and that also was good. I like it, but it's not one of my favorite things. And here will be my last item. Okay, my number 10 item is this. That sweater or cardigan that I just made. This came out of a pattern from 123 Skein. Um, I made this for myself. Um, and I actually just wore it in a video the other day because I wore it to <coughs> watch Handel's Messiah. Hey, Flinny. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, I'm really proud of myself for making this one, too. But this is the deal. I think I'm going to go back in with some of my extra mandala parts down there and put two more rows around here and do a little decreasing because it keeps falling down. Just a sec. The other thing that I want to do is I want to add a couple more rows here, up and down this part. The pattern is shown in the book with the gal wearing it like this and it comes across. But because I'm larger in my upper part, it comes very far across. So, I don't think I'm... I was talking about making myself another one with my Woolies Hades. But I decided, you know what, I'm just going to pull it out. Or I'm just going to put a couple more rows up here and a couple more rows down there. To kind of, one, have it cover this way and then not slide down my shoulders too much because it's actually a little big. All right, well, those are my 10 favorite things that I have crocheted slash one knit. And um, I definitely see a big change in how my crocheting skills have developed in the last three years. Um, the first thing I ever really made was my daughter's mermaid tail, and I have a love-hate with it. Like, I hate how it looks, but I love that I made it. And then now, three years later, I'm able to make, you know, some wearable items. So I'm pretty impressed. You know, practice pa makes perfect. And, you know, I think the one thing that really helps is my, hmm, how do I say this? I'm getting better at finding easier patterns. I just think that initially I would just try to find the first cheap free pattern I could find. And sometimes paying two, three, four, five dollars for a pattern ensures that you're going to really understand. And I also, especially with my last pattern incident with that shell shawl, I find that the more directions that are given, the better it is. Because then you're for sure going to know how to continue. Um, so yeah, that's it. Make sure you check the description box to a link of other folks that are sharing their favorite things they've made. Also, I will try to pull in some links from some of these items, but I'm going to tell you truthfully, all these links are, um, almost all of these, there's videos about. There's a video about this the sweater, there's one about the granny shrug, there's one about the cow, there's one about this scarf. So I have talked about all of these things, really. Um, a lot of the things that I first made look like garbage and or I've given them <laughs> I've given them away so I don't have them here to show you. And then um, I for this there's no real patterns. You know, there's just crocheted flowers glued to a thing. Um, but you can look this up and there's a whole lot of ideas like that online. All right, that is all, all I have. Um, this is the last video I'm filming until the end of Easter Monday. 
Um, this is being filmed Thursday night, the 18th. Um, I'm going to be spending the 19th, 20, 21, and 22 with family and God celebrating and uh, remembering Easter and Resurrection Sunday. So there'll be a bit of time before another video comes out. Um, oh, real quick. Oh, I wish I would have looked this up because I told her I'd give her a shout out. There is one gal that I'm going to give a shout out to. Her name is, her YouTube channel is Scarlet. Oh, diggity dog. Give me a second. Let me pause and find it. Okay, her name, her YouTube channel is Scarlet's Lovely Stitches. She's young. Um, she has a couple little kids. And she is just starting. She did do a lot of pre-recording, I think, and was able to pop up a bunch of videos right away. I watched one where she talked about her tension. I watched one where she was talking about a dress she was making for her daughter. I watched a couple of her shopping hauls. So, you know, check her out. I think it's really great that someone so young <laughs> is enjoying this hobby. Um, also, I'd like to say hi to Kate from Shetlands Islands. I really appreciated your wonderful, loving email. And, um, you know, I am really excited to get to know you and chat with you more emails and videos. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching and subscribing. And until then, happy crafting. Bye. Wait, wait. Oh, Flynn wants to say goodbye, too. Oh, he wants, oh, he got a. He has a magnet to show you, or a, yeah. What do you think of that? Okay, do you wanna say happy crafting? Happy crafting, bye. Bye.